All right, sports fans. Uh, sure, I adjust my microphone here. Uh, we're talking about section 10-1, uh, and then we'll eventually get to 10-3 here in a minute. Algebra 2, we're exploring conic sections. Uh, I do need to change, uh, get my textbook here, and show you some of the pictures on section 5, or on page 535, so you understand what we're talking about. I'll get that book. Yes, I am fully aware that some of you do not realize just how quick I am when trying to retrieve uh, items like textbooks. Uh, so, uh, a cone. We're talking about cones. Um, often referred to in that one song, you know, Bad to the Cone. B -b 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 bad Okay. Anyway, so the uh, what you see in front of you is what's called a double-napped cone. I know that sounds weird, but it's basically just two cones. Whoa! Sorry, I lost my microphone. Something happened. I'm not sure what. Um, I might have to use tape. I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, so... The cones are hooked together at the at their vertices, uh, the vertex being the point at the top. Um, and so what you're seeing is that we're taking a plane and we're crossing it through the, the cone. Now, if we do it parallel to the base, which is what the first picture shows, and then we would look at what's called the cross section, what we would see is a perfect circle. Now, if you come over here to this third one, let's suppose you cut it through, but it wasn't parallel to the base. What you would get is an ellipse, which is kind of like a circle. So they are related to each other. Now, if you cut it through, not parallel to the base, and you intersect the base, what you get is a parabola. And if you cut it through both bases perpendicular to those bases, what you get is you get a part on the top and you get a part on the bottom called a hyperbola. And we've talked about the hyperbola. It has two branches. You've seen a basic hyperbola, y equals 1 over x, which is actually more complicated than you think, but uh, that's for a different discussion in a different time. So. The first one we want to talk about is the circle. And the circle, the basic equation of a circle looks like this. x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. Now, the first few examples we're going to do are pretty easy, and then we'll, we'll get into the more difficult ones later, but they're not really that difficult anyway. The center of the circle would be right here, h and k. Yes, they look backwards inside the parentheses. I do realize that because they have the minuses in front of them, but it is h and k, and we'll talk about that. r squared, well, that's the square of the radius, so the radius is equal to r. So here's a pretty simple example that we're going to do in example one. It says graph the circle x squared plus y squared equals 25. I want you to notice something about the coefficients. So both of these, both are positive coefficients and equal. That's how you know if something's a circle. The coefficients are positive. Coefficients of the squared terms are positive and equal. Now, what's the center of this? Well, you notice that there's no h and k. There's nothing being subtracted or added before it gets squared. So what does that mean about h and k? That means that they must both be zeros. So the center of this circle is right at the origin, 0, 0. Now, the radius is sitting over here. No, it's not 25. That's the square of the radius. So we want the square root of 25, which we know is 5. Now, graphing this is not tremendously difficult. We find the center. We 
want to use the radius. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm just going left, right, up, down. One, two, three, four, five. Doing the best job I can to draw a circle, even though I'm not an artist. That one wasn't too bad. Whew. Okay, so what's the domain? In other words, what's the smallest x value? What's the largest x value? I want you to notice something. Negative 5 is here on the left, and positive 5 is on the right. I'm going to do a notation that looks like this. I used brackets instead of parentheses. Parentheses would indicate, uh, for instance, another way to write this would be negative 5 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 5. But we are not going to use this. We want to use this notation. The bracket indicates that you are including the endpoints. It's like the equal part right there. If it was a parenthesis, that would mean you would not include, or it would be not equal to that value. Now, the y value for the range, range being here to here, that is also negative 5 to 5. So my domain and range are the same in this particular situation. Well, what about example 2? Example 2 is not a is not a circle. It's an ellipse. Which is uh, uh, kind of a common name that a lot of people use is oval, but uh, in the math world it's ellipse and there's actually a very technical definition for an ellipse. So uh, you want to make sure that you're um, using that word when referring to this shape. You're going to notice that the coefficients of the squared terms are Still both positive, like the circle, but they are different. And being different causes the um, shape to change. So it's no longer a circle. One of the axes is going to be longer than the other. Now, I can tell you from looking at this that the center is still 0, 0. There's nothing being added or subtracted before it gets squared for the x or the y. So, still 0, 0 for your center. When you plug in 0 for x, what do you get for y? 0 is basically going to wipe out that first term. So, we really have 144 divided by 16, which is 9. And then we need to take the square root of that. Now, when you do that, right? So 16y squared equals 144, y squared equals 9, y equals plus and minus 3. Don't forget that you got the positive and the negative. Okay, well, do the other one, right? Plug in 0 for y. If I plug in 0 for y, it's going to knock out that term. So we have... Uh, x squared equals 144 over 9, which happens to be 16. So x is equal to plus and minus 4. So let's, uh, let's take a look at our graph here. So we have up 3 and down 3 and right 4 and left 4. Now, imagine kind of an imaginary box. That box contains the ellipse. And these four points represent the edges of the ellipse that touch the box.
Now, I know if you look in the book, you're going to see that they made a table, and they put in a lot more values than just 0 for x and 0 for y. Um, for your circles and your ellip the ellipse, you don't really need to do that. Now, what's my domain? My domain goes from negative 4 on the right to positive 4 on the left. So negative 4 or positive 4, including the endpoints, so we've got to include. But I only go from negative 3 to positive 3 here, so my range is different. Also indicating it's not a circle, because the distance in the domain is different than the distance in the range. Okay, let's look at example 3 here. Example 3 is different. It's a hyperbola. So, this one, you're going to look at the squared terms, and you notice that they have different signs. They are not both positive. One is positive and one is negative. Now, the positive one is telling me which way this hyperbola will open. When we get our graph done, it's going to have a basic shape that looks something like this. The two branches, I know, I know, kind of looks like a basketball, you know. I understand. But you're going to have two branches that open up left and right. So you got to keep that kind of that sketch in your mind as we do this. Because there's no points inside here. Nothing inside here at all. Okay, so you're going to plug in 0 for y. Plug in 0 for y, see what happens. You get x squared equals 9. You can take the square root of both sides and you find out that x equals positive and negative 3. So I already know on my graph, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. I know I have those two points right there. So what happens when I plug in 0 for x? Plug in 0 for x. Okay, so that's negative y squared equals 9. That's uh, y squared. If I divide by negative 1 on both sides, I get negative 9. I take a square root. Uh-oh, that's an imaginary number. What am I going to do now? Well, what it means is there's no points in there. You tried to find what? You tried to find the y-intercept, and there is no y-intercept on this graph. That doesn't mean there's never a y-intercept. It means on this one, there's no y-intercept. So what are we going to do? What kind of values am I supposed to pick? Well, what you need to do is you need to look at your graph. If 3 and negative 3, those two values, are the kind of the, uh, the, the places where the graph starts to turn, we must pick values that are either larger than 3 or smaller than negative 3. So, for instance, we could pick 4. And while we're at it, we might as well pick negative 4. So... If I pick 4 for x, I get, uh, if I plug it in, I got 4 squared minus y squared equals 9, uh, and negative 4 squared minus y squared equals 9. Okay, so that's 16, right? And if I uh, move the 16 to the other side, I end up with negative y squared equals negative 7. And I divide by negative 1 to get rid of the negatives, and I get y squared equals 7, and I take a square root. And what I end up with is positive and negative square root 7, which is some, let's, let's take a look at the decimal. I get 2.65, approximately, 2.65. So when you go all the way over here to 4, I got a 2.65 and a negative 
basically the same point above and below, which is going to create my shape. Well, guess what's going to happen over here when you plug in negative 4? The exact same result, plus and minus 2.65, right? Because that's 16, and when you take it to the other side, well, we're right back in the same boat we were in before. So when you plugged in 4, you really, you didn't get just 2 points. You got 4 points, because at negative 4, you have the 2.65 and the negative 2.65. So you can get the other side of the graph as well. So you really just needed, in this case, to find the x-intercepts, and then you needed to pick another value, the plus and minus version for x. Only had to plug one of them in and solve, and that told you really four points. Now, what's the domain? Domain and range. Well, as you look at this, we've got two pieces. We've got everything on the left side all the way up to negative 3. And we have from 3 all the way to the right. Here's how we're going to write that. Negative infinity, comma, negative 3. Now, this one has an open parenthesis on the left and a closed parenthesis on the right. Because we can include negative 3. I don't care how hard you try, you cannot get your hand on negative infinity. So you cannot say that you are including it because it's as if to say that's a fixed value and it keeps going forever and ever and ever. Okay? So we are going to we're going to use a symbol which we can talk about. Uh it's the union symbol. And that means that you have another set. And we have another set on the other side, which goes from 3 to infinity. It includes 3, but you can't get your hand on positive infinity, so you can't use the bracket. You have to use the open parenthesis. Now, what's the range? Well, it keeps getting higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. And it keeps getting lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. So that would be all reals. For the range. Question you might have for me is, how do we know which way they open? Do they open up or down, left and right? How do we know? It has everything to do with the positive squared term. In the last example, we had this. I noticed that this positive squared term was x. So that's the left and right opening variety. If it had been positive y squared, that would be the up and down opening variety. We'll practice those in class. In section 10.3, guys, we're talking about circles. Sorry, I shouldn't say guys, maybe ladies and gentlemen. The equation for... Sorry, I was just eating part of a donut, and uh, if, if you were wondering. The equation for the circle, I reviewed it with you a little bit ago, but x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared, where h and k are the center of the circle, which in the last examples, obviously, we had were 0, 0, but obviously now we're going to change those. And that's equal to r squared, where r is the radius of the circle. Well, we're going to get, uh, so let's see here. Write an equation of a circle with center negative 4, 3, and radius 4. Okay. So I need to fill in those blanks. I got negative 4 there. I got positive 3 there. That's my negative, my h and my k right there, h and k. And my 4 over here. If you want to simplify that a little bit, that would be x plus 4 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 16. That has a center at negative 4, 3. Yes, I know that looks backwards from your common sense. 
And then the square root of this number is your radius. All right, example two, write an equation for the translation of x squared plus y squared equals 9, 4 to the left and 3 up. So in other words, I want to take this, this equation of this circle, which right now is centered at 0, 0, with a radius of 3. And I want to move it 4 to the left and 3 up. Will that change the radius? Absolutely not. So this number is going to stay where it is. But we need to alter alter the h and the k, the center of the circle. Well, if we move 4 to the left, 4 to the left, that's really like negative 4, right? And if we move 3 up, that's really positive 3. So 4 to the left and 3 up. Boy, that's pretty much just like the last question, almost, except for the radius is different. So x plus 4 squared plus y minus 3 quantity squared equals 9 is my final answer. Um... So when you look inside here and you see a plus, you know that means to the left. When you see a minus in the y, you know that means up. Yes, you can get in the habit of thinking, oh, that's just it's just the opposite of what you would normally think. So give an equation, example three. This one is not exactly like example three in the book, but it's... It's pretty much the same idea, so this is what I think it would be more of a worthy test or quiz question. Give an, e an equation for the circle graphed. So in other words, instead of me handing you the, uh, the center, you have to look at this and tell me what it is. Well, it looks like the x value is 2 and the y value is negative 3. So we are at the center 2, negative 3, with a radius equal to 1, 2. Okay. So, let's see what we got. X minus 2, right? 2 goes in here. Y minus negative 3, that goes in here, equals 2 squared. So if you want to write your completed answer, you'd have x minus 2 quantity squared plus y plus 3 quantity squared equals 4. Not terrible. Just had to put a couple values in and you were done. Example 4. Find the center and radius of the circle with this equation. All right, well, the center, that would be, looks backwards, right? So it's positive 16 for H, but negative 9 for K. And let's see, what's the radius? The radius equals the square root of 144, or 12. So there's your center and your radius. Example 5. Graph this. So we've got this equation. We should be able to identify the center. Negative 1 for H. Positive 3 for K. We should be able to find the radius, square root 25, which is 5. So negative 1, positive 3, up. Uh, this is going to be a bad graph, isn't it? Let's go to my next screen, and we'll try again.
And then I need to use the radius of 5. So down 3, 4, 5. So there's the bottom edge to the right 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. There's the right side, right? Because you moved over 5 units that way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's the top. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's the left side. Okay, and then just do the best job you can at drawing the circle. Obviously, we're not professional artists. Some of you are a lot better than I am. But, make it look like a circle, not a diamond. Okay. Uh, and there you go. There's your circle. And that's how easy section three is. Thank you. We'll talk to you in class.